92.1 WROI, WROI FM.com. Streaming audio live, RTC Channel 5. We're going to have audio and video soon on RTC Channel 4. That's why Dakota's in the studio. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to have you back with us. Yeah, nice to be back. You have your song ready to go. You can uh, burst into song and sing a tune for us. Uh, not today, but no. I'll get one ready for the next time. Okay, good, good. We'll, we'll actually look forward to that. <laughs> Brian Johnson's here from the Fulton County Community Foundation, part of the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Brian, good morning. Good morning, Tom. To quote a famous American, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> I, I think, yes, indeed. was it yesterday or the day before that's the official start of fall and today is starting yeah, to feel Saturday. like fall? Yeah. Was that? So, okay. we're, yeah, we're so off. It's, it's, it's a nice one out there. Yeah, so. It is. It's a nice day, but it feels like fall. It feels like fall. Right. So, well, we got things like the chili cook-off coming up. That's, that's right. Should be fall time. October the so. 13th, right. All right. Well, looking forward Busy to it. Busy times at the foundation. We it know is. that. We've got a few things going on. Um, first of all, I'd like to start out by saying thank you to everybody who came to our business after hours a couple weeks ago. Um, had a good turnout. It was a, a good time to um, show everyone the new office. Um, and so thank you to the chamber for helping organize that and everybody who attended. Um, it was a good time. If you haven't been through our new building, of course, we're at 227 East 9th Street now. Um, I'd invite you to stop by whenever you have a chance. We can give you a tour of the office if you haven't been through there. So um, exciting. And um, again, thank you to everybody for the um, making our business after hours a su success. So um, another reminder, we're still getting a few questions about preschool. Okay. Um, we do still have some funds available if, if students need, um, families need help getting their students to um, preschool. So it'd be for that pre-K year, so um, the year before you go to kindergarten. Um, or if you just need help connecting with a preschool, we'd love to, to be able to help you out there. So um, another reminder, um, if you're listening to this live or watching this on Channel 4 before October 1st, um, we do have an application for health and wellness grants um, and those are made possible by the Brent L. Blacketer Memorial Fund and the Hope Hospice Legacy Fund um, for organizations that are providing um, some sort of health or wellness service in the community. Um, that application is on our website, nicf.org. Um, if you have questions about that, um, let us know. But again, October 1st, this coming Monday, is the deadline for that. So i um, like to encourage folks, if you have an organization, have a project going on, um, to check that out that um, may apply for that. So um, a couple things recently. Um, we are able to award the Akron Park Board a grant of to help them provide some additional access. Um, they have some really nice facilities um, in the Akron area um, at both Pike Memorial Park and Cutshaw Park. And um, they are looking to add some additional approaches around the pavilions and provide some extra access for folks that, that may need um, a a solid paved um, path to be able to get into those pavilions. So um, we were able to grant them $8,000. They're making some really neat revisions and updates in the parks over there. So I'm um, excited to support that. And something else that's coming up um, this weekend, can we say as heard on WROI, the <laughs> Kiwana Fall Festival. That's right. Um, that's a really great time. I'd encourage folks um, this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to check that out if you haven't been. Um, it's a really wonderful festival. Um, if you don't know who Tom Maid is, you probably haven't been to the Fall Festival, but he works um, tirelessly all year to put this weekend together. A really neat um, thing. There's things going on. It's one of the things that Tom um, has always stressed is he wants it to be low cost so that everybody can can afford going there to the fact where they have free rides, free food, free entertainment throughout the whole weekend. So um, in addition, they have vendors and, and a, car, a full carnival that's that's there. So they it's um, wonderful. I encourage folks to check that out. Um, a couple things we've been able to do kudos recently. To, kudos to, I'm not yeah. to interrupt you, Brian, but kudos to, to Diane Mate and, and Luke Mate who yes. worked side by side yes. with Tom all the way through that yes. that particular fall festival and really make it a, a, yeah. a, a, a 
wonderful event for Fulton that County. That family puts puts their heart and soul into this festival. Yes, they do. Um, and we had the opportunity to work with um, Kiwana Heart, which is an organization in the Kiwana area, um, to actually establish a fund. One thing that Tom has been concerned about is the long-term sustainability of the fall festival, make sure that it keeps going. So um, we keep... Um, have been talking about this idea, and this year we're actually able to start the Kiwana Fall Festival Fund in honor of Luke Mate. Of course, Luke was kind of the the motivation to start this. He he asked his dad, "Well, why can't we do this?" <laughs> and next thing you know, um, they wrong. have a successful festival that's that's one of the biggest in the area, and right. just such so well done. So. Um, that fund is available. If you have questions about that, don't hesitate to give us a call. Or um, Tom, I know, is promoting the fund. Um, but a really neat way to honor Luke. Um, and this is something that has been a passion of his and um, really exciting to see this come about. We are also able to provide a grant of $6,000 to help provide some of the entertainment and activities that happen this weekend for the festival. So um, wonderful to see that grow every year I, I go back and every year there's something new to see and something exciting and something that I'm surprised by and I'm um, just a, a wonderful way for the town of Kiwana to come together and provide a affordable entertainment option for exactly and and something to be proud of I mean this right. is a really most people when I say hey this is a one of the biggest festivals in the area they just kind of get this look on their face like are you telling <laughs> are you giving me a line and then they go to it and they say man that was yeah, really it was. that surprised me yep. what was all there and how how well it was done so I again encourage folks to check that out um, this weekend um, it well, we talked about fall, so can we talk about Giving Tuesday for a second? We sure it's can. Something that's coming up. Um, this will be the the fourth year that we've been able to do this. Um, of course, November twenty seventh is the date. So mark your calendars. We'll have more details coming out, but okay. um, we'll have our office um, open during that day. Have some matching funds available, but um, get it on your calendar, November twenty seventh. So after you've had time to recover from <laughs> your turkey coma and Black Friday shopping. <laughs> and Cyber Monday shopping. And I think we forgot Small Business Saturday. Right. You have Giving Tuesday, so a way to give off, kick off the holiday season um, with giving um, back to to needs in our community. So, so today um, we've, we've kind of been looking at the history of the Community Foundation. 25 years. 25 years. Um, our anniversary month will be October. Okay. And so it, it's, we're almost there. It's hard to believe that it's the end of September already. But um, what I wanted to talk about today was our community funds, because that's really been, as we look back in the history of the foundation and some of the things that we've been able to grow and change over the years, um, community funds have been one of those things. So I guess the first question that I want to answer is what are they? Okay. So basically, it is a fund that a donor has made a gift to and said, I don't really want to have any input on where this goes. I want you as an organization to decide where those funds go. So the neat part about that is that allows us to address current needs in the community. So funds that were given 20 years ago by donors are still being used today to meet current needs. Now, the, some of those needs were not even around when those donors made those gifts but those donors because they said we want you as an organization we have a grants committee that sits down and reviews needs in our community reviews grant applications and um, then makes decisions based on the current needs and so those funds are flexible so 20 years from now a grant committee will be sitting down and reviewing those same needs and and we may not have any idea what kind of new needs may be happening then but because those donors have said use these for current needs it allows us to address those things rather than having to go out and fundraise for a specific project we can already have those funds available so just some examples of the grants that we've given in 2018 um, the times theater 
Um, we kind of joke in the office this year may have been the year of the mower. We've been able to help two organizations, the Grass Creek Lions Club and also the Fulton County Soccer Association purchase mowers um, for maintenance of the parks and the soccer fields. Um, the Fulton County Special Olympics, a really neat program. They get to go to uh, statewide games. Um, we mentioned the Kiwana Fall Festival. Um, we've seen some, we've had some pop-up grants that we've been giving away throughout this year. They've been very popular, too. They've, they? they've been very popular. It's very fun. But those have all been made possible by our community funds. Um, and so it's kind of exciting to see how that has happened. And talking a little bit about how that has changed over the years. Of course, when we started, um, Lily Endowment, they recognized the importance of having those community funds that can address current needs. And so a lot of what they have done throughout the years have encouraged or even focused on raising community dollars for, um, for, the, for our organization to be able to grant out based on current needs. And so... Um, some of the early gift programs, which is Give Indiana Funds for Tomorrow mm -hmm. is the acronym for that, um, Building Endowments. And some of the early programs focused on that. And the most recent match that we had, um, Lilly Endowment offered the Gift 6 Initiative, um, a matching program where um, they offered us $500,000 and we were able to raise $500,000 in our community um, for community grants. And so... I kind of like to look at results of what that was. So looking back um, before 2016, um, we were able to grant out on average $72,000 a year in community grants, which is not an insignificant amount. Exactly. Um, but then starting in 2016, um, we were able to grant out $136,000. 2017, that number jumped to $179,000. 2018, that number is all the way up to $195,000. And that's really as a direct result of the success of the matching program and, and the generosity of our community. It takes both, doesn't it? It, it does. And so it's, it's been exciting to be able to see that happen. So when we talk about some of the changes that have happened, um, one of the things that we did actually did before gift six was interesting 2012 we started thinking about this a couple years before that as a organization we get a lot of grant requests and people say well i can get by with this and our committee had some discussion we said you know what what would happen if we asked organizations not just to tell us what they can get by with but if they really what's the big picture? What would ideally the solution to a problem look like? Um, and so 2012, we awarded the first impact grants that we've um, awarded. We had two organizations, the Fulton County Animal Center and the Kiwana Community Food Pantry that received, um, the animal shelter received $70,000 to help construct their new building and add a fence. And the food pantry received $30,000 to be able to move from an upstairs corner room in a church to a ground floor facility that has overhead doors, um, is handicap accessible, and um, just really serves the community better. So 2012 was the first time we did that. The problem with that was we only had funds for impact grants that year, but then due to the success of the Lilly match, um, 2000. 15, we were able to start offering both. And then, so now we can offer impact grants. We can also offer what we call community support grants, maybe a few hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars. Okay. Um, and so it, it's neat to be able to offer both of those. Another big change that happened um, in 2016, our traditional grant cycle was we would have an application available in the summer deadline would be in the fall I remember that. organizations would learn if they got a grant sometime in the middle of november which was okay but what happens if you had a project that happened in october well you don't you'd have to plan exactly. a year ahead of time and if that project wasn't even an idea at that point 
then you're out of luck on the grant cycle. So um, with our additional funds, what our committee started talking about was what would it look like if we had no grant deadline, if people came to us when they needed money. And so 2016 was the first time that we did that, and it was kind of interesting. The first half of the year, we didn't get hardly any grant applications because people would say, well, when do I need to apply? When do I need to apply? Is that deadline coming up? And you'd say, there's no deadline. Well, when should I apply? Well, give us a little bit of time to review your application. And and so it's been interesting to see and when we talk about that, we, we see examples of organizations that have come to us and said, well, we need funding for this now. Well, in our previous grant cycle, they would have been out of luck because we'd have to say, you know what, we don't have an application available. Now we can say, you know what, your project's coming up in three months, submit an application to us now, we'll review it, we'll be able to let you know if we can fund, fund part of that or all of it or, or some other idea. So it's, it's neat to see how that has changed, and we've, we've had that situation happen where organizations have come to us and said, hey, we need some funding now to be able to help do this project that didn't exist two months ago. And so it's, it's neat to see how that open grant cycle and not, for us as a funder, not make organizations work on our timeline but we can be more effective by working with organizations on their timeline. Sure. So um, it's, it's neat to see how that has kind of happened throughout the years and really the growth of that and really and everything that we've talked about, whether it be impact grants, open grant cycles, the more funds available has just really been as a result of the generosity of our community. So um, what I wanted to do is take a minute here and just read through some of the, some of the named funds that okay. we have that are community funds. And what happens with this is donors are able to set up a community fund for um, $5,000 and then name it. A lot of times they're named in honor or memory of somebody special, Um, but it's really neat. And that way that person's legacy is carried on in the community as well. So um, our list of community funds, the Albright Family Community Fund in memory of Norma Jean Albright, of course, Jay Albright, the executive director of the foundation, him and his family were able to set Mm -hmm. that up in memory of his mother. Um, The Baxter Inc. Fund, the neat piece of trivia about that is that was the very first fund within the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. So thanks to the Baxter family for setting that up. Cunningham Community Fund. Of course, last month we had Larry Cunningham (laughs) on. I don't know many people that are more excited about community foundations than Larry. Um, The Deb Ogle Deodorf Community Fund. Uh, Of course, Deb worked in our community and the the food service industry for so long. Um, Douglas and Jennifer Smith Family Fund, um, a family that's very involved in our community. E. Paul and Annabelle Baker and Harold and Mildred Turk Community Fund. Um, a fund set up by Dean and Susie Baker and in memory and honor of their parents. Um, the First Federal Savings Bank Community Fund, a local um, company that supports our community. Um, of course, we have the Fulton County Community Fund, which is just our general fund. If somebody says, I don't have a specific need, anybody can give any amount to that fund. Um, the Fulton County Service Committee Legacy Endowment Fund. We wouldn't be here today if it weren't for our board members, and this was a fund that was actually set up by our board during the Lily match, Um, and so folks that not only give of their time, but of their resources as well. Um, The Gottschalk Family Community Fund, of course, there's three generations of Gottschalks that have been very, very instrumental, Um, and I think the fourth one is up and coming as well, (laughs) so um, the George and Dorothy Grunlier and Lyle and Doris Hillman Community Fund, okay. um, a fund set up by Don and Lynn Grunlier in, in honor of their parents. Um, the Kiwana Community Fund, a fund that was set up by, um, by families and businesses in the Kiwana area. Um, the Larry J. Carr Family Fund, of course, okay. we lost Larry way too early, but his family set up a, a community fund in his memory. Um, the Mart Smith Family Fund. I'm kind of remiss to mention a Cardinals fan, but, um, of course, Mart and his family have been so instrumental in so many things in Rochester over the years. Um, the Mary and Fred Frazier Fund, the family that um, Mary and Fred were instrumental in our community in a number of things. Um, the Phil McCarter Family Community Fund. Okay. Family that... I don't think I turn around without seeing one of them around involved in something. Um, another 
wonderful corporate citizen, the RTC Community or RTC Communications Community Fund, um, another local organization that provides so much support to our community. The Shaw Markley Leisure Community Fund. Linda Leisure is a, a board member of ours and set that up in memory of her family and parents. Um, the Shepherd Family Auto Group Community Fund, okay. a local business that again um, supports so many things. And also the Smith Sawyer Smith Inc. Community Fund um, set up by the Smith Sawyer Smith um, Agency. And all these funds are able to um, make these grants possible. Okay. So Very good. I'd like to say thank you to all those donors who have set those up. Of course, those community funds are wonderful. If somebody wants to set up a name community fund, um, like we mentioned, the $5,000, but anybody can give any amount at any time to any of these funds that are already okay. established. And and that's really the beauty of the foundation is taking all of the small donations that I make and combining them with small donations that other folks in the community make and making a big impact in our community. So, okay, very good. So thank you to everybody who have made these grants and community funds possible. So um, it's, it's exciting to see where we've been and where we've gotten to now as an organization and, and really the the impact that we've had in our community as a, a lot whole. to look so forward to in the future is a lot to look forward yes, to in the is. future so just um, one quick reminder health and wellness grant applications that application is available on our website the deadline is october 1st for that of course those are made possible by the brent blackett memorial fund and the hope hospice legacy fund so um, if folks have questions about anything we talked about today you can always check us out online nicf.org um, you can like us on facebook under northern indiana community foundation give us a call 224-3223 or stop by our new office uh, i'll have to get the requirements <laughs> as far as how long i can say the new office but um, 227 east 9th street here in rochester we'd love to talk to you about any ideas or questions you have for our community brian johnson thank you very much congratulations on 25 years and uh, certainly a lot to look forward to in the future thank you tom thank you